Hi, everybody. What camera am I looking at? I don't know. How's it going, everybody? Um, right now, I've got this amazing concoction of some kind of pineapple juice, uh, and I am ready. This could be a 15-minute podcast, or it can be seven hours, just because of what's in this drink. Uh, but I did want to um, encourage you, if you're still on the fast like I am, keep with it. Don't give up. If you want to jump on the tail end of it, this is uh, the last full week of our fast. Uh, we are now on day 15, right? And um, and so I want to encourage you to come on board with us. And I'm telling you, uh, some of the things that you've been struggling with in your body, in your mind, um, all around you, all of that can be easily taken care of by just a couple days on a fast. So push the plate away and join us. Um, there's an all water fast. You could do six to six. Uh, the majority of people are doing are, are breaking at six here at the church, and we recommend that. Um, and I'm doing all liquids. So let me tell you what I'm really like um, excited about when I come off this fast. I'm excited about eating a bagel. That's what I want for me now. I just want I want a bagel, and I want it from Three Brothers ba Bagels. That's what I wanted. And and it's this this place, okay. Um, and I'm not, I'm not just saying it because this guy goes to my church, okay? God bless you, Brother Colin. Uh, but he brought bagels on one Sunday morning before the fast. And I said, let me try this everything bagel. Because if you can do an everything bagel right, then you got something special. And boy, was that the best everything bagel that I ever did have. You know how they just like put the, 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 the toppings on the top of the bagel and then they just leave the bottom like, you know, to fend for its, itself? Not at Three Brothers Bagels. Not there. It is fully saturated. It is just, uh, I mean, it's made with TLC and then you splash in the anointing of God in there. And I'm telling you, it's a winning combo. But... Um, you, you ought to follow them and just see what's what's available. Um, that's what I secretly like to do on a fast. Um, and I honestly think that my Instagram knows that I'm not fasting because I could open up to my Instagram right now and it'll be one person creating something amazing after something amazing after something amazing. So why did you choose a pastel color today is what I would like to know. I thought maybe I could do something different. <laughs> So we're all working in the spirit on the Lord's day, huh? I thought, like, I'm going to wear pink. No one else is going to wear, like, light colors because it's January. It's That's what I said. I was like, it's, da it's dark out. This morning I woke up and I was like, it's dark. It's snowing. Oh, my gosh. It's Even so your makeup. Snow. Like, I just can't. Yeah. I, this, it, this seems planned. It's not. <laughs> not crazy. I put, like, I, I saw a piece of gum and, um, and it was, like, a fruity Gum. so it just kind of like curbs like you know when you're hungry mm. it just makes you feel like I already had one. Oh, that's right it makes right. you feel like you're <laughs> you're um you know you're eating something but it's a mistake it is a mistake it's just um it's delusion you know what I mean you don't want to do that what are we talking about Sam because it kind of jump jump kicks the like hunger pangs for me anyway uh, I tried having some tomato bisque yesterday. Ooh. And we have now crest into... Gross. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. It's like, I don't care. I tried putting, like, a little bit of cheese in there, and I was, like, a two, two, two spoonfuls in, and I'm like, I cannot. Gross. It's just, I don't... See, this is interesting, like, how it, it like, at, at first, it's like the, the tomato soup is like, oh, my gosh, that's what sustained me. It's so good. Now it's like... Maybe it's the acidity, but I'm drinking pineapple. There's nothing more acidic than that. I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't want to look at it. Where's anyway. Rachel? You want to grab Rachel? Oh, she is. Okay. Um, so what are we talking about today? I'm going to open up. Any, so what I, what I, I said all that to say, jump on this fast. And um, we've already been seeing, uh, you know, crazy things. Uh, we... <laughs> 
You know what? I knew one day we were going to laugh at this, Dallas. Yeah. Um, That's not that, it's not that day yet, but I still You know, think it's less, the less joy of the Lord like is our when strength. you pray and then you tag fasting along with it Golly, because explosive. Jesus is coming explosive. so close. It's You're taking a C4 the with a detonator and then so stinking oh. fast. So I guess like, you know, when you pray, just know what the heck you're praying because it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, you want things exposed? Buckle up, buttercup. Come over here yeah. and stand oh right next gosh, to me. Mira otra. Mira. You have like lime green too, makeup? I We just we're have... Exactly literally. What is going on? Even the... Uh, <laughs> can you... The Huda diamond green one. Okay. Can you even deal? Like, What? Honestly, I just ordered a sweater that was this color, and I, now I'm like ticked off that I didn't wear it because I could have been like. Is that out. not so awesome? But like, why are we wearing these colors? Lord, like, we should all be in black and brown because it's ice cold out there, and it's. It, we just dark. want there to be. We want Easter to roll around. We're uh, ready for the springtime. He is Amen. alive. He is alive, Easter. Lord God. Come on He's now. Alive. Yeah. He's alive. He's alive. No, I mean, this is podcast. going to be for, yeah, podcast. Okay, I love you. Love you. You look great. Right? What in the Sam Hill are the odds? We just like looked at each other and we're like, this is Yeah, crazy. that's strange. So jump on the fast blind. Yeah, and, and, and buckle up buttercup because mm -hmm. there's going to be some, I mean, you just, all, all it is is confirmation that, you know, God the is Lord right. is He's, faithful. He's, He's with us. Throne. Amen. Hebrews 4.16, the title of this podcast is Kill the Beggar in You. Killing the Beggar in You. Um, if you want your 2024 to look different, to feel We're different, flowing. to be Adele. different, you gotta, gotta, gotta put away the beggar mentality. This is something that I guess it's not labeled as this, and a lot of people talk about it, but it's, it's, it's not... Uh, clear enough, but we, me and Mags, we're gonna make it clear for you today. We gonna make I, it I made it clear for our staff right now. I can you believe it? About, for, for, about, about team leads, I said if there is somebody who approaches you about anything free, can I have a handout with their handout? The um, the response right. is an, a mat, an automatic no. Right. How do you sit under this ministry and then have your handout? I don't get it. Sweet. I don't get it. Sweet. And then claim to be a member of this church. I mean, I'm not throwing, trying to throw shade at anybody, but at the end of the day, we have to go from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. In Jesus' name. But I was just thinking, like, why does that, why does that spirit irritate me? Because we've never had that spirit. But the truth is, it's because it's not of God. That, that beggar's mentality... That victim mentality, that entitlement mentality, that's ultimately, if you boil down to it, that's what, what it is. I'm entitled to what you I'm have. I'm entitled to what you have because I don't have. You know, that, that, is, that is the epitome of greed. That is the complete polar opposite of God. Because the it's, only it's quality Luciferian. It's what it is. It's that Luciferian. God possesses is, is he's a giver. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Come on, guys. This is going to be very easy. Um, but I mean, ch also check your heart if, you, if, you're, if you're... No, no, no. And never, I'm I'm, I'm, we all have this. I'm frugal. We all have this. I'm, I'm cheap. I would, I would do a deep dive. We all have this at some point. Going through COVID or whatever, that you you are because you are in your human nature, you want to hoard, you want to keep. That's just human nature. So this is actually like a very spiritual thing. Sure. Coming over to the 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 God side is the way to do it. And, but but it's it's you're not born with it. You're born with the stain of sin. And really, like the the first thing a child is exposed to is me, mine, mine. I want this. This is me. You know. So it's a a, a very selfish way of life, of the way of of looking at things. And you know what? Some people never put that away. And you could tell. And let me tell you, I don't have a ton of friends. And that's purposeful because I never 
Like the moment I I smell, the moment I like no. take notice, verbiage, mannerisms, actions, that this person is not a giver. Mm -mm. Bye. That's where you and I, we part ways. Because that's a basic, like to me, that's basic understanding of God's character. And if you don't possess the basic, the 101, You're not gonna, the, the, the little idiot. You have nothing to offer. Don't try to come at me with the I prophetic can't go gift. Because there is Apostolic gift. No, no, no. Teaching gift. You ain't no nothing. You you don't have it. You don't I have it. I I I totally agree. I can't. I totally And let me tell you agree. the the friends in my network right now. And it's interesting cuz I, I I look to to the past and and see those individuals the 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 friends that I that have been in my life at certain points that I could see the qualities in them too. But now because God is so good, he brings in like people. Like minded people, yeah. So deep cries out to deep, you know, like begets like. So you are like the people that you're around. <laughs> that's 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 look in the mirror. That that is they are uh uh they they're around you because they're like you. And so if you don't like and, and unfortunately after this um preaching or the this teaching here on on killing the beggar in you. Um, you're going to start seeing those things come out very clearly. Whereas before, they were kind of like, uh, you know, camouflaged, not anymore. We're going to expose what that looks like, how that sounds like, and you got to get rid of it altogether. Because really, if, 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 if you are a beggar, well, I won't say it like that. I, if you, I'm going to say it like that. If, if you have poverty, stinking thinking, Poverty, stinking thinking on, on just like what you can control. Forget about anything spiritual. Money is something that you can control. The Bible says that God will bless the work of your hands. So, so you know, prosperity, that's something that you can control. You can take, you know, take hold of it. So for anybody to tell me that, you know, this isn't taken care of before this, I don't, I'm not going any deeper. If you don't have the basic fundamentals of what it is we're talking about, then then we can't we can't move forward. Yeah, I think what we all I think what you're hinting at is um, like say somebody who doesn't tithe, por ejemplo, uh, but truly believes that uh, Jesus Christ is coming on a white horse to sound the trumpet, or you know what I'm saying? It's just I, I mean, that I don't I don't even know. I would like to know how how many people at our church tithe. And I don't. I mean, percentage-wise. Percentage-wise, I think it would be higher than the, the average fare. I, I wouldn't doubt that because you reproduce what you are. But it's still probably low in comparison. Probably, if if like the average is what is it, ten percent of the congregation gives ninety percent of the tithe. I think it's less now. Um, for us, it would be yeah, like thirty percent probably, and that's probably a booming church. Okay, listen. This is why this repulses me, the beggar mentality. And let me tell you, just out of um, uh, put myself on the chopping block, that was me. This is, this is what I'm talking about. When it comes to a beggar mindset, do you wake up in the morning wondering who's going to find you out? Do you wake up in the morning wondering when, where the blessing is going to come from? Like if this person is going to send you that check or maybe you're going to get a cash app from so-and-so because she, you know, she's something, you know, whatever. Like, are you waking up every morning wondering who in the earthly realm has the power and the possessions to bless you? I'm, I'm trying to make this like as is like, you know, plain as day. Yeah, I don't think like that at all. I don't know what that looks like. Let me tell you. Like you just like I, I in the, in the beginning <laughs> of our marriage, I I thought like if, some, if somebody could just listen to Jonathan, if we could just have somebody find him out, you know. So I I was always waiting for the next opportunity. 
You're waiting for a check. Like We're in the waiting mail? for like, oh, maybe somebody sent them and felt a letter of the spirit to send us a check and whatever. Like maybe somebody could invite us to their church if we just go and and they could see us and 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 hear, and you know, all of this stuff. It was always like we're waiting on somebody else in the earthly realm to advance us. And let me tell you, that was a major like hiccup in the road. Yeah, wall mm-hmm. hiccup. There, it was a wall. Do you know, and and then when we started getting ample opportunities to minister at great big churches and great escenarios. Um, I was going to say casinos, but. <laughs> um, stadiums. Stadiums. You, you come, you, you leave and you're thinking like, okay, now TBN is going to call. They're going to ring-a-ling-a-ling. And then you realize they didn't ring-a-ling-a-ling. <laughs> Nothing. Right, yeah. And in fact, you go, we'd go to the bigger churches and be at a greater deficit. Yeah. Because sure. the bigger churches wouldn't give. Yeah. And so it, you know, it was just like it was such a Nothing like is a, ever what it seems. It isn't. <laughs> and then you realize, wait a minute, like God, if you finally and this was attached to our giving, because we understood through the word that God He takes what is that scripture that says um, uh, prosperity over his servants? What is the word that I'm finding? <laughs> um, he, takes, he takes. Hold on. I totally blanked. Pleasure in the prosperity. Yes. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He wants you to be well uh, uh, taken care of. I, you know, I was even thinking about, um, you know, I, I have a, a little pieces of like gold ju- jewelry or whatever. And I was like, ooh, that's just like too much, ju- like that's just too much gold. And then the Holy Spirit was like, they left Egypt loaded with silver and gold. Loaded. Yeah. And I thought to myself, man, that's just a little cute little picture of, you know, what the, that's how God wanted it. That's right. He wanted to. He's like, walk around like Mr. T when you get up out of there. Yo, what? Why not? I need to get a, I, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get a thick gold chain. You just wait. You just wait. Wait for it. So I, I look. So as, I, I, as we were kind of like um, progressing in the ministry, uh, it, it like dawned on me. Like the, no one else is going to bring the increase, and of course, according to scripture, because the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the uh, east or the west or the south. It comes from God. So promotion comes from God. And if you do things, if you do all things unto God, then he's the one that's going to bring the multiplication. He's the one that's going to bring the blessing. Mm-hmm. And so added to that is, is, is not just financial blessing, but everything in my life. If I, if I have the right mentality that I'm not looking to impress certain individuals or people to get their attention and to, 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 to make my name great. Once that dies in you, then you can move forward. Once you begin to look at the things that God has called you to do as, as a task that you do unto the Lord, then the blessing will flow. But the moment you, you wake up and say, like, oh, I wonder if this person can do something, you know, if, if, if we talk to her about this situation and, and make her feel a little bad, maybe she'll, like, you know, write us a check for the rent. You know, like, that's just people's mindset. And you know why? It, it, like, on the car ride here, I was thinking, like, why does that aggravate me so much? Because in Hebrews 4, verse 16, it says, Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne room of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Never, ever, ever. Is there a, 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 a time where kings would allow some sad sap come into their presence and just start begging? Actually, they, they were not allowed to come in, okay? They weren't allowed to come in. And if you weren't happy and if you didn't have a, a joyful demeanor, your head would probably be cut off. And so what we have to understand is that God says, this is how you approach me. 
The throne room of grace is, is where God abides. If you want to approach me, make no mistake about it. You come do it boldly. Don't come with the... <laughs> because he will call you out on your bluff every single time. So there's a way of approaching God, which means there's a way of approaching life. True. And if you have a beggar's mentality, bro... Long, you're you're going to miss the bigger days. concept. You're going to miss the bigger things in life. Yeah. Because if you're waiting for a handout, if you're waiting for somebody to offer you that job just because you're sticking around that, that, that place or whatever, and, and you refuse to work, you refuse to... Uh, uh, be a problem solver. Be a problem solver. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, except you better kill that. When did you go from beggar. wanting um, finances, do you know, like waiting for a handout, to wanting to know what they know about money? Um, As I don't know when, when I, because I feel every single time people like give, like, and I'm not anywhere near what the capacity where Pastor John and you are, but people do hand me money. Right. And, and it's not like I, I, I'm unappreciative of it, mm -hmm. but I would, but there is something to like, I want to know how you're wealthy. I don't know. Like, I, like what are the principles that are, are, that that person is tapping in? Like genuinely not wanting money from people. Like, how do you get to genuinely not, like, I seriously, I would, like, I, how do you go, like, because oh, I know that it was, like, at one point it was, like, okay, maybe, like, get on their good graces so that they could be a blessing to me. But now, now I feel like everyone, you know, executives, you know, you, the pastors, you know, Patrick, it went from what could they potentially bless this ministry with to let me just glean information from you. Right. I want to know how you're so wealthy and, and genuinely not want ni un centavo. Because I think that we hit a law in the word about he blesses the work of your hands. So that means that there is a work that must be produced. So whether we knew it or not, by the spirit, it unlocked a, 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 a law. It has so so a law is different than you just asking for a blessing. A law is something that's set in motion, and if you do it, it will work for you. Sure. So once you have that mindset that the law of sowing and reaping is real, and this this is like fully like this is everything. The law of picture. sowing and reaping, yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah. Because it's not just about finances, it's about your time, it's about your energy, it's about your mindset. It's it's it, it's all encompassing. It is. So if you get the basic of sowing, which is why I think God has us do it. Yeah. Because facts. it opens us up to um increase. Yeah. And it closes the door for greed. And greed is the, the motivator for every evil thing. 100%. You know, money really is the, the root mm -hmm. of all evil. And it's the, one of the reasons why, if you read in Elijah, uh, in Elijah, in Isaiah, is it Isaiah? Let me, let, me, let me find you this scripture real quick, because I already told you about Lucifer. Um, in Isaiah 14. Because a lot of times uh, people say that the devil, the reason why he was like um, banished from heaven is because he exalted himself above God. Mm -hmm. And he thought, you know, he looked at himself in the mirror and he thought like, oh, I could do this better than God. But really there was something that prompt um, that... that expulsion yeah it, it, it so, something took root right. in in satan's heart okay and it says here isaiah 14 and this might be it it might not be let me look it up in a different version hold on 
because it was the moment that he felt that in his heart was the moment he was like cast out because he exalted himself above God. But there was a root Mm -hmm. to him exalting himself and thinking he was better than God. Yeah. Okay. And it says, and it will, it'll be on the day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain and turmoil. How the oppressor, the Lord is broken, which uses the whole Okay, right here, verse 12. How you've fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, light bringer, son of the dawn. You've been cut down to the ground, you who have weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will make myself the most high. But in fact, you will be brought down to Sheol, to remote uh, recesses of the pit. Those who will... who will gaze at you, they will consider you, saying, is this the man who the earth trembled, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrew its cities, who didn't permit the prisoners to return home? No, this isn't it, hold on. They're bright today. Are they always this bright? Okay, guys, hold on one second. <laughs> what is it? Now I gotta like look at. Because I'm, I'm like, yeah. There has to be a point, and I'm trying to think of like when there was a. Difference, because I think everybody does think in that way, and I I think it's as you're learning how to be a good steward, then you realize, wait a minute, this actually works. Like the law of sowing and reaping actually works. Um, But I'm just trying to think of an example of when it went from, you know, that beggar mentality, like expecting a person to be the source of blessing to wait a minute, a person isn't my source, God is my source, and he has empowered me to uh, create wealth. I, I honestly think that that's the, the word of God manifested. It's just enough, it's just, it's was it just like, you, it was constant, it was constant, constant, and then all of a sudden you're, you're, you are it. Because that's, ultimately, that's why the, the faith is is uh, the the message of faith is the 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 word in mm-hmm. your mouth and in your heart the Bible says yes that's but, what faith is but and then so the work you, is like faith without works is dead but and then the works is you giving and you putting because that's an act of faith if you're gonna listen to the word long enough and then pro, pro, like profess mm-hmm. the blessing of God then you're inevitably going to do something to make sure that what you say. You believe. Yeah. And the only way to do that is by action. Sure. So you can say that God is good and his mercy endures forever, yeah. but then you could also not believe it. And by your actions, that's what's going to matter. It's the fruit that you produce, really, that... Um, yeah, and I guess it wasn't like a one, like, okay, it was just, a, it wasn't one moment. It wasn't. That, I think it was a progression, and I think that w- that's important to say. Yes. Because this isn't something that you just Arrive. immediately, yeah. you need to break it. And then there are times, because it's my nature, because I'm in flesh, yeah. that I will gravitate towards worrying about finances. Uh, and yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, yeah. no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to be afraid of that. I'm not going to fear about certain things. Yeah. And then now the opposite is happening where now I'm like, there is nothing, there's no amount of money that I can spend that I'm ever going to go broke because I've got so much seed in the ground. A hundred percent. So you you mean to tell me? And I keep tabs. Yeah. I am I am that petty. I don't care about like uh, you know Jonathan's like oh I don't I don't keep tabs. That I keep tabs. I keep tabs of what I've given and the offering above that. And I'm like I've got you know millions and Seven. conservatively yeah. millions of dollars of of a harvest. Mm-hmm. So 
I sleep like a baby when it comes to recession because I know that this is foolproof. Yeah, that's right. And it's a law. Just like there's the, the sunrise every single day and the sunsets every single day, there's a law instituted there. So it's the same with sowing and reaping. Yeah. Whatever you sow, you will reap. And ya, se acabó. It's literally. But but that's taken time to build yeah. trust. Yeah. And it, it's not like, like God, you know, I have to, you know, like he's got to prove to me it's i have to prove within i've got to break that notion of lack and poverty and struggle i have to come out of that and 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 renew my mind because that's important to renew your mind because this is the one thing that people will continue to struggle in for the rest of their life we never arrive at a place where i've i've read all the bible and enough is enough yeah the, it says daily renew your mind yeah. renewing it Every single day, because that's how the enemy works. It's one little thought, one little seed has the potential of bringing in such an incredible harvest, man. And I wish more people would understand that. I wish I will leave it at that. But it says here, okay, Ezekiel 28, verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Mags, I want to get into this, but not right now. But not right now. And because there's, according to Dakes, there were four paradises in the future. There was Lucifer's Eden. In the future Eden, or in the, in, the, uh, in the scriptures. In the scriptures. Uh, Lucifer's Eden, Adam's Eden, the paradise in the third heaven, and the paradise under the earth where the righteous were held as prisoners. It's above my pay grade. This okay. is where I always stop so the conversation. Lucifer's Eden no. and Adam's Eden. Okay. So, but Adam was on the planet. I mean, Adam... Yes. Yes, and so was Lucifer. Correct. But what I, like, why haven't we ever discussed the fact that there was a serpent on planet Earth when Adam and Eve were created, because God created the heavens and the Earth, the planet as we know it. Why has no, everybody's just been so chill about the fact that a serpent just showed up and started talking to Eve, like NBD? Big time. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Well, I never well, even go. I never questioned it. I, I was never like, oh, there, there he is. There I'm he like, was. Why was there? He was in the shadows the entire time. But yeah, I never thought twice. But anyways, continue. So anyway, I'm going to leave that there because I am going to talk about aliens in the future. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> you were in Eden, the garden of God. This is Lucifer. We're talking about in Ezekiel 28. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green beryl, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis, lazuli, um, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. Tell me God's not like a showy God. <laughs> He decked Lucifer out. I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. So what is this kind of evil? He's going to tell us right now. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sinned. I'm sorry. That's in there? Wait a minute. Verse 16. Ezekiel 28, verse 16. Your rich commerce led you to violence, and you sinned. Ezekiel 24, 16, read it in the Amplified, because I'd like to know. Uh, damn it. Until the day evil was found in you, and it wasn't because he thought he was better than God. Evil was found in Lucifer the moment he allowed greed to take hold. Rich commerce. He was a businessman. This is going to be above <laughs> your heads, a lot of you. But what you don't understand is there were a group of people living okay. on the planet. Here we go. And that's why the Bible says, 
oh, you Lucifer, which is the fallen angel. It wasn't Satan because that's his fallen state. So we're talking about the angel Lucifer who did deceive the nations. So there were nations represented on the planet that he was over. I, this isn't this isn't like uh, this isn't like you know news. This is just people just don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. But it says here that the reason he began to podril say to rot from the inside out was because of his rich commerce. What does the amplified say? Um. Through the abundance of your commerce, you were filled with lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Commerce. Rich commerce. The abundance of commerce. So he was so, and this is why the Bible says that uh, money is the root of all evil. Because of that. Because this guy allowed... Uh, you know, the, the money and greed and, and earth desires to get to acquire and all this kind of stuff to, to really strip them of everything God put in them. <laughs> Anything that was good, greed took hold of it and just pulled it right out. And you sinned. So I banish you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, almighty guardian, from your place among the whatever. Your heart was filled with pride because of your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. That's 17. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. He threw him to the ground to the curious gaze of kings. So when Satan came, he got his ass kicked out of heaven. There was people on earth. Okay. You defiled your sanctuaries with many sins and your dishonest trade. Your dishonest trade. Your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have come to a terrible end. So tell me that money isn't important. You are full of freaking crap. Tell me that the this attitude the state of greed that people are in because the moment you expect somebody to give you a, a handout the moment you think that what i have belongs to you cuz you don't have you don't have is is the moment greed is is taking root in your heart and it's the whole reason why huh <laughs> it's the reason why people go down that's scary and people don't increase yeah for their sake for for their own sake Dang, dude. because god knows i know I've, I've already seen this play out so if i increase you in these areas your heart still sucks so you got to make sure your heart is in the right mode mm -hmm. it's clean and holy and and something that god can use before the blessing comes in I mean, I just, if, if a perfect being could be susceptible susceptible to that kind of downfall at the mercy of, you know, the financial things, then how much more are we earthly? But I think it's also wonderful that he set up a system to avoid that love for money. Tell me why he knew that. He Didn't they do that. that in the garden? Because in the garden... You could eat anything but the tree. That principle started right in the garden. And he said, I've got everything here for you. Just don't eat this one thing. Don't partake of the one portion that I've reserved for me. And it was supposed to subdue that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. But take notice of, of how the enemy came in. He said, oh, you, you'll think just like him. 
if you do it this way, if you touch what doesn't belong to you. Because ultimately, that's, it's not about the eating necessarily. It's about grabbing hold of something that doesn't belong to you, dummy. Yeah. So it was never meant for you. You were supposed to, you had, all, all, you had it all in your hand. In fact, he said, I've given you dominion over all things. And he even said, hey, Adam, all you got to do is say the word. And he started, he's like, and just so you know that I've given you the men, dominion, go ahead and name these, these animals. Go ahead and, and, and out of your mouth, begin to tell them who they are. So, okay. And that's why it's such an error to, to not operate in this, in the, the law of sowing and reaping. Because it'll never be enough. It'll never be enough. It won't. So if Adam and Eve were given dominion over all and all was not enough. I mean, that's why we have to take this seriously. That's why this is, that's why it's so, it's so disgusting to me coming into it because I know, and I know I, I've, I've aligned, aligned myself with that kind of poverty mindset. So I know what I'm talking about. I can, I know it because I've been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you, and just like fear, just like fear is, is a look, it's a spirit. I see it and it disgusts me. It repulses me. I don't have sympathy for people that are, are in fear because I've been there. And I know how to get out of that system or that, that uh, mindset. Do you feel me? And uh -huh. I know what that requires. Oof, man, this just got heavy, my God. It, like, I know that fear, what fear strips you yeah. of. Sure. And and it's an ugly thing. But it's the, a I very mean, ugly thing. Yeah. So like if you if you see those things and you begin to see the patterns, then I, you got to avoid it altogether and be like why would I want to be in captivity? Why would I want somebody telling me what I can do and what I can't do? No. That's not freedom. It's not freedom. So it's the same thing with the, with the beggar mentality. People waiting around to get discovered. People waiting around for you to like give them something or to like cut them a break. If you've got clients that are just always, uh, I don't think you did that right. I, I, don't, I don't like the way you should take, you know, 30% off of that. Like, ew. Ew. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not, and that, uh, part of the giving mentality is the fact that you are willing to go above and beyond blessing another individual. Do you know what I mean? So it safeguards you. So it does. So it, it's, 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 you never become that person that's like always trying to save a penny. You know, just for what? You want to save $250 for what? Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know... Because even when people are like, well, the Lord says we need to be wise with our, with our money. To whom much is given, much is required. And I think that that comes from a place of making sure that you don't get caught up with your wealth. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's where you have to steward wisely your wealth, where it's, it doesn't grab a hold of your heart. I don't think that that necessarily means pinch pennies or be the first one with a to-go box for leftovers at somebody's house. Right. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, there's just more to it than just frugalities. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I don't know. Like, it, this is so, like, insane. I'm just thinking of, like, 100 different things at this point because it does encompass so many things, and they're all rooted in, in this fear. But you can so kind of grow accustomed to your mode of operation that you don't even know that it has root in your heart. Right. Yeah, and that sucks. And I hope this exposes every last bit of that. Because if, if you understand the devil's MO, it's to get you so enthralled with what you get that you are willing to... Uh, let go of, of what's more important. Do you know what I mean? Like I would rather eat the fruit because he's got you so enamored with what, what the end result might be in you. Oh, you'll have the same mind as God and you'll think like him. A a a that you disregard the, the word of the Lord mm -hmm. that says don't eat.
So you you say, okay, I'll put, and that's what people will do. Like in in and that's that's the devil's tactic. And then once he's done with you, he just look at Britney Spears. No offense, Britney girl, I'm praying for you. But like look look at her. Mm -hmm. It's like he uses you and then just spits you out. And you're left like a shell of yourself with mind issues and on drugs. And, and it, it's a scary place. And for what? And for what? She's got millions of dollars. And that's one of the things that I'm so grateful for, that God revealed those things even when we weren't wealthy. Even when we were like, you know, we didn't know it at the time, but we were struggling. Yeah. <laughs> That, See, know, <laughs> because even when we were struggling, my mindset was like, we're taking was. over, baby. Yeah. That's a mindset. I remember I never being like, was I, struggling. I remember, like when you guys came in, in the white Toyota, we had our last $700 in the bank account. And we were like, we have $700. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to bless you with new tires. I know. And, I, and we were left with like 50 bucks afterwards, yeah. like dumb, dumb. Uh-huh. But, uh, but you we saved our lap of luxury. <laughs> I'm like, let me be the blessing here. I'm doing really well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because we That's didn't even really have funny. enough money to get new tires. But come at me back then. And, and I never had that like, I'm poor. I was like, we're making it. We're making it right now. We are making this right now. I mean, we are sliding through yeah. <laughs> Delaware tonight, yeah. but we are making it. See so this Juicy it, Couture lip gloss? Yes. Yeah, $23. That's it. Macy's. That's Boom. it. Boom. Luxury. That's it's it. so stupid. Stupid. But it, it was, it's a, the mindset, yeah. you know? And so it's like if you carry the right mindset, that's it. Yeah, because they were. That's 99% of it, bro. Even when I was in the world, my tithe check was written out. Yeah, because I knew it did not, it felt wrong. Right. It felt wrong to hoard. Right. I how don't know you how you a believer that. How do you reproduce you, that? I don't you know. You love God. How can you say you love God and you don't give to him or his cause? Or are you looking for a... You're, uh, you're full uh, of crap. Uh, uh, yeah. I love makeup. My receipts show that I love makeup. <laughs> I love shoes. Yeah. I've got lots of receipts. Mm -hmm. I love God. I have more receipts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back. Because I love, I love him, and I love his um, la obra. Yeah. Why am I sp thinking I in in, in we, Spanish? We've spoken a lot of Spanish today this week. <laughs> this week. It's it's I love the work of the Lord, so I'm gonna give to it because I love God. So I, this is just, but it's but not a difficult that, con concept. It's the fact it's that not. I want to be like him, and in being like him, you understand that everything he's ever done was for the benefit of me. Creation in general was made because he was with Jesus. He was with the Holy Ghost. So there was three, three gods in one. And they were like, this is too good. We got to involve uh, other people here. Let's create man in our image so that we could show them how this thing works. This beautiful cycle of love that we have, we've got to bring people in on it. Mm -hmm. Give. How can you, how can you be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not. And then not help people or not, uh, you know, uh, not, not be a giver. Do you know what I'm saying? I just, if you're going to eat with me, you and I are going to be fighting as to who is going to take that check. Mm -hmm. That's the people that I surround myself. We fight for the checks. We're not, we're going to split the check in thir thir 13 ways. Nope, I'm not, I don't surround my, myself with people who split checks. I don't. <laughs> There's so many people who do, like, listen, no shade, no shade. But there is, there is, I guess, generosity is a spirit. Yes. You grab it's a hold completely of that spirit. It's, it's, it coincides with the giving aspect. If you give, then you're going to be generous. And that's something that your giving will produce. Giving is, is uh, generosity will be a, a, a byproduct of giving. Yeah. And then you get to the point like us where we're completely obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a, that, that scripture that says it's better the, to give than to receive. Most people don't even know. They don't get it. They've not seen what that looks like or how that feels like. And I'm certain of it. Because we'd have a lot more givers, extravagant givers. 
And we have now crested for quite a few years now into that realm of it's better to give than to receive. It is way better. And I mark my words, God as my witness, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and he knows us through and through, okay? I would much rather give a million dollars than receive a million dollars. We've been through it, yeah? So we know. I mean, not... Uh, we don't. I re I received a million dollars for sure. It was better to give it. I don't know how that works. It's it's, it's a, a born hard of thing. God. It's a. It's it born. has to be born of God because that is not in per a person's no, nature. That's it's so true though. It's so so true. So my question to you is: If you know these things, like why wouldn't you try to activate them in your life and try to be a blessing instead of a burden? Why, what would cause you, except the spirit of stupid that comes on you, yeah. the spirit of dumb and deaf? No, I think it, it's, it's rooted in fear. It's rooted in um, kind of like, you know, those animalistic traits where it's like you eat, you sleep, you have sex. It's just this nature to hoard. It's a nature to just protect. You know, you have to, thinking, you're thinking about the future. You're looking, I need to, fear. I must, like, I see fear. Uh, dried beans, uh, canned goods, uh, rice, because you never know, too many bottles of water. You know, that happened. We fell for that trap during 2020 for about, I spent a thousand dollars on meat. I, I bought a whole new freezer. About, about 24 hours. And then my power went off on a trip and I lost all that meat. And I had to clean it. And the Lord spoke to me. And yes. And you did that out of fear. That's why this happened. I and said, I'm when, sorry. And it was funny because then when, when I ended up finding out that the meat was dead, I, I, this was in because I'm trying to teach that this isn't the way to do it. No. Moving forward, you have Amas to ni nunca. And there is something about that where that's, that's what you get from giving. That's what you get from sowing. It breaks. It breaks the power that that has on you because now Fear. it doesn't, there is, like I know how to run water in a sink. That's how I feel we know how to get the, get, make, make money. Right. That's it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where I'm at. I know how to turn that faucet on to get that money flowing. Right. It doesn't matter what's going on, what kind of plague, what kind of this, that, the other. I, I when I say, I mean, I wish people could look into my heart Me and too. how passionate yeah. I am about this. If you could look into my heart and see how I give zero poos zero. about finances, as finances in the, in the sense of save, save, hoard, hoard. I, there is nothing that I won't give away. Right. I mean... I mean, in ethical, you know, <laughs> but I'm just saying like, there's literally, I've given away cars, I've given away money. There's nothing that has a heart, like a, like a grip on my heart. In fact, You're right. growing up, what were we in, always in the practice of doing? Giving away what had so, like gripped us in our heart. My juicy <laughs> lip gloss. 100%. <laughs> it would be like shoes. Remember, you know, that's why I, I'm so moved when people give a Fendi purse. Yeah. Or they give something that like, this has my heart and I'm giving it away. And because I receive it. I. Because I'm like, congratulations, um, you just broke something off of you. For real. Not because I, we ever, you could get money from, from those sure. bags because yep. you can't. You just can't. A lot of even the big jewelry that we get, there's nothing that we can do with it. Nope. You know, you can get, you can melt the gold and get literally like 1% on of what you paid for it. Yeah. So it's not a transaction where we get anything out of it. It's this heart transaction that you can't quantify what the transaction that just take, took place That's in the right. spirit. That's right. But I, I mean, I wish I want that so badly for people to like, you think that this generosity thing is benefiting somebody's pocket. It's not. It's just not. Okay. It's breaking you free from a yoke of bondage that will, is, was orchestrated and created to, to literally take you off course That's it. and destroy your life. Let me tell you that this just, crept, this just popped right into my spirit here. Genesis 22 because it's on the heels of what you're talking about, Mags, because it is, giving does 
break things off of your mindset. It breaks things off of you in the spirit. I, de I definitely believe that. And also in the, in the natural. But just like on, uh, what she was saying, some people give and it's a big deal to them, even though the the if it's a it's a if it's a two thousand dollar ring we could probably sell it for a hundred legit a hundred dollars like the, that's the reality of it we have we have rings and stuff that people will hand over to us that are worth seven thousand dollars ten thousand dollars they have the receipt and everything for what they sewed or what they paid for right, it right and then our we go to our like local jewelers and they're like three hundred bucks for all of it. <laughs> yeah, for a, a lot of a big them. chunk of that, three hundred bucks. Um, but it's the it's the heart element without it. It's the obedience element. That's right. And obedience is sacrifice. Obedience. When you say I'm going to obey, something is required of you to obey. Yeah. The 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 thing that God wants to do in your life. You know, it's just interesting that whenever God called, like, even Abraham, okay, uh, or Abram at the time, he said, Abram, leave your family and go, go here. That was the sacrifice that Abram needed to take in order to see the manifestation of blessing in his life. And so for us, it looks as give, and it will be given, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And so there's elements of these things that we have to do in our own lives so that it could benefit us. These are not things that are instituted in, uh, like ethereally, like, oh, that God is blessing us because he loves us and I, I don't have to do anything, just believe that God. I'm just gonna confess that God can do it because his word says that he can. No, the Bible says give and it will be given back to you. That is direct orders from God. So obedience is very necessary for you to come into this kind of blessing. But understand this. When Abraham went to uh, kill his son on the mountain, it says in verse 8, God will provide a sheep for a burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked on, on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abram built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. So obedience led this man to sacrifice what was most important to him obedience he said i will do that and i will sacrifice my son my only son because you tell me to and i love you more my heart is more in alignment with you than anything else i might see in the earthly realm and so it says Abram, Abraham picked up his knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied. Here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Don't hurt him in any way. For I know that you truly fear God. You haven't withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked at the and, and saw a ram caught by its horn in the thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. And to this day, people still use that name as a Proverbs on the mountain of the Lord. It will be provided. Well, that dag damn it. We always talk about Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But what was the sacrifice that you put out there? In order for that name to be revealed. In order for that name because to be revealed. Because you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. So and and you, you don't know what God's trying to do, uh, the work that's in you. All he, he didn't want Isaac dead. He's like, I'm not one of these other pagan things. I want to see your heart. And he counted it as done. 
In the heart of Abraham, he might, he, it was already done. And in his heart, Abraham had already crucified his son. It was a given, it was done. It was a done deal from the moment he said, go and crucify your son. And he said, yes, I'll do it. So it was a heart thing. It wasn't the actual act, like, uh, uh, action of killing his son, but it was the heart's intent that he was so aligned with God yeah. and what pleasing God that that was all encompassing to him that he knew this was because he even told his, his, uh, the, the team that he was with. He said, we're going to come back. We're just going to go out and worship the Lord. But me and my son, we're going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. But he kept. He kept his team with the asses back, didn't he? Yes, he did. And so, but he did out of his mouth. He knew there's no way that he's not going to be, if he's got to be resurrected, That's right. if, if, if something's going to happen, but I'm coming back with my son because he's already made the promise to me. So he never swayed yeah. in, in understanding that God's promises were true. And it didn't matter what he asked, he was going to be faithful to his promise. That's good. In, in, in making Isaac the blessing or the, the beginning of the blessing of, of the, the multitude of generations or nations that were going to come from, from him, from his lineage. Yeah, amen. So he trusted God. Yeah. And he knew. And God counted it as done. And he said, oh, now I know I've got your heart. And that's where the giving aspect, that's where the sacrificial giving comes into play. Yeah. So that's why when these people give and it's like, oh, you know, like in their hearts, they're, they're coming in with like tears and, and, and they're giving what, what, what is a precious seed. The Lord takes it just the way you gave it. That's it. That's precious. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back precious. That's true. That's, I mean, and, and there's no explanation for it because we get reports, right? I sold that $6,000 ring and my husband got a $46,000 raise. Uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And you're like, uh, oh, okay. Because we didn't like financially. We Some girl gave me a Louis Vuitton purse that she had been using for like a little bit. And she's like, I felt the Lord to give it to me. It's one of my favorite ones now. I like rock it all the time. Yeah. Uh, but... She, uh, she texted me like two days later, two brand new Louis Vuitton purses, random people just gave it to her that felt brand new. So God was like, I'll take that seed and I'll wow you. Because you <laughs> did that with, with, uh, as a sacrifice. And that's the thing. Most people don't like to talk about the sacrifice element of it. But that's, that's where it all, that's where the, the beauty. It's uh, not, to, not to, because we're, we're opening up a gym soon. Um, and more details to follow. But... Uh, I look at everything through the to through the scope of like working out too, and if we can take a look at this doctrine of sowing and reaping, you can really kind of even paint a picture that it is a sacrifice that is a temporary thing for a greater increase. And so when you're working out, you know that you can't start off with a 45 pound you know, dumbbell, Amen. right? You're going to start off with a 10 pound or a 15 pound dumbbell. Five. Okay. Or five. And, and then you work your way into the giving element, you know, but at some point in order to build that muscle and to strengthen that muscle, you know, that you have to make the sacrifice of adding on weight. And so wherever that is, it's a good, it's good practice to think of it and treat it as um, something as mechanical as that. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it could be like this automatic practice where it's, you know, um, you understand that this is, this is just the beginning. I think a lot of people are like, well, uh, Dallas, once I get my million, you know, I'll, I'll give it and uh, I'll sow it to the children. And <laughs> yeah. people wouldn't even know what to do with a million bucks. Um, and so it's like you have to be where you're at, but you do have to give that that it's you know a sacrifice, a sacrificial gift when you're when it's leaving your hands. Like I think about the woman with the mites, and that was an eighth of a penny that she gave. That was a I think it was um I think where did we learn that in the, no <laughs> uh what do the kids watch Superbook. Um, and so think about that. She gave more than everybody else just by percentage wise. Right. So wherever you're at, you do have to make it a practice. Like this thing will not have root in my heart. And for me, it, I remember it being 20 bucks. This is my last 20 bucks, Lord. You know, but could you imagine if I would have held on to it and then made it a practice of holding on to everything that that's it. God was calling, that's like, it. let it go, let it go. And that's let it go. why this is an exercise. It that has to happen. 
Every it is an extra. Single and I don't want to dumb day. it down because I know it's a very spiritual, like, right. it, it's a very, myst- like, it's a beautiful, thi- like, spiritual practice. But it does have to be seen as something that you have to work. Yes. You have to work. You got to work. It's the a word. law. The word is something How that needs to be How stupid am I going to be if I, if I plant a strawberry seed and the next day I'm, like, pissed off that there's no strawberries? That's pretty stupid. It is pretty stupid. Or how, how, how ridiculous am I going to be if I plant a, an avocado seed and expect a watermelon? It's like as, 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 as beautiful as these truths might be in the spirit, they also come into alignment on what of like the actions that we do on earth. And it's necessary for us to look at these things as realities, not just as and that's really what unbelief is. Unbelief has everything to do with m- making the word of God something that is like 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 spiritual fog machine. Like it's up there in somewhere. Yeah, right. Unattainable for me, but you know. Or it's reserved for the holy or reserved people. Reserved for the for the reserved priests. for the ministers. Yeah. Yeah. What a lie. The holy spirit not the holy spirit. The word of God. The reason why there's unbelief is because you don't make this a reality. And when you don't make it a reality in, in, in simple terminologies, it's because you're not walking it out with the actions that you do, with the words that you say every single day. And that's how unbelief starts to grab hold of your life is because you start compartmentalizing this is spirit and this is the only over here. And when I really need like a touch from heaven or a healing, I'm going to go crest over into this this lane here. But for now, you know, we're going to do what we can and blah, blah, blah. And 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 then you you you. You don't make this one with you. Mm-hmm. You don't make this a reality. And that's that's the deficit. And that will forever be a deficit. The moment you start making this its own separate thing and not a, an everyday, something that you can walk out, something that you could speak out, something that you could practice every single day, it ain't going to work for you, this truth. No, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So, but, but this is the, the, the interesting thing is that when you, have, when you carry that mindset, it trickles on every aspect of your life. Amen. Ugh. Because you, you, you are, you've got the entitlement issue, you think people deserve to, you know, blah, blah. And when you're sick, uh, you, you, what, what? What? How are you going to, how, how can you, and this is just why it's so interesting, the believer, because we think that Jesus is coming back on a cloud. There's a trumpet from heaven that's going to sound. And on that day, we are all going to poof, disappear in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. And we are going to meet him in the air. And you don't believe that you can pay off your house. You don't believe that um, you can buy a car, cash. You don't believe that your business is going to be like the, the number one business in the nation. But you believe, okay. No puss. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. And I started off in, in, in the book of Hebrews, didn't I? Yes. And it was come boldly into the throne room of grace because there's no begging. If, if God has already provided, he's already provided. Martha Munizzi he's talks about it. Okay? He's already provided everything. In fact, Jesus went, uh, you know, as far as, as saying on the cross, it's done. Everything, it's sealed. It's perfect. Nothing needs to be added. Everything that was necessary, I've come to complete Boom. All you got to do is walk in it. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe that the word of God is truth. What is the word of faith? It's it's in my mouth and it's in my heart. All those are the two things that are required to activate the blessings of God. Speaking the word, which means ingesting the word, and then the action of the word, which is at, at that point is going into your heart and you're saying, "Hey, if you tell me through your word, to do something, I'm going to activate it and do it. Sorry. But enough. Calling yourself a Christian and then wanting people to like, you know, 
Give you a, give you a cut, cut you a slack, cut you, a, just t- trying to take advantage of people. Let's call it what it is, and you're t- taking advantage of people because you don't want to pay for the rent because you're broke. Well, get get this get, get this thing in your heart. Shoot, you can come at me with that. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hold on, hold on. I'm recording a podcast. We're, we're, let's let's wrap it up here. Uh, listen, uh, my daughter is cringing. She said, and I'm looking forward to something that she's going to say. Hopefully, it's not horrible. Uh, but I want you. I, I I don't even know if if my thoughts are fully revealed on this topic. To be quite honest with you, I don't think they are because. I just wish that people didn't carry that mindset that, you know, somebody has to find the mountain. You're looking for blessings in, in everybody else other than God. God is your source. God is the, 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 the source of it all, the blessing, life, light, everything. God is the source of everything that's good. Why not ask him? Why not say, God, what can I do in my day-to-day to thrive. What can I do? What is the work that you would have me do so that you'd be able to bless it? What can I do? Because there's action involved. It's not just about praying and wondering if somebody's going to send you a check, open up that door of opportunity. No, it's you hustling and, and, and showing God, I'm doing this because I love you. I'm doing my work here because I'm doing it unto you. What is that? Get it, Cam. Get it. Get it. Get it. Okay. Get her off. What is wrong with that child? So I want you to lift up your hands now. And we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are listening to this program and those that are watching on YouTube. And I ask that every form of beggar mentality would drop off of them. In fact, by your wonderful Holy Spirit, I pray that you would arrest them. Every time those thoughts come into mind of fear, of poverty, unbelief, or doubt, I pray, Father, that like a, like a big giant red flag, you would uh, uh, point it out in the mighty name of Jesus, point out every one of those things that needs to be removed, that are, that, that's actually hindering them from moving forward in the things that you have called them to do. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. I love you. Join us. We're either in Texas or here for the remainder of the uh, prayer and fasting. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Let us know that you are listening or watching. We love you. We'll see you next week.